little bit of gentle pressure. Absolutely on. beautiful today. Stoss 23 here, and today we're going to look at the Terra Knives MK3 Forester. Uh, this is a totally made in the U.S. knife, and I got to say, I'm highly, highly impressed. The guy is only 26 years old. He built his shop in his basement, and he's producing some very high quality fixed blades out of super steel, something you, you don't see people jumping right into because they are hard to work with. He uses Peter's heat treat, which is arguably the best heat treater in the business. And this one right here is Rockwell to 63 HRC. So it should perform outstanding. You have a beautiful, you could call it drop point, spear point, whatever you want to call it. But this is the jack of all trades type of blade right here. You got that perfect amount of belly so you can cut on a flat cutting surface easily you can cut stuff in hand and uh, i gotta say initially this handle feels outstanding it's got some extra thickness to it it's got a beautiful rock pattern on there you can tell he definitely takes pride in his work ever to down to the last detail i mean everything is nice and softened all the materials made up perfectly and uh, yeah super comfortable got a nice belt satin finish hopefully that's coming through I, I just felt like i needed to do this one outside in our nature trail in the back of our subdivision because it's too pretty of a day today i think it's like 70 something degrees nice satin finish he grinds them nice and thin to perform this one comes uh down to around 20 18 to 20 thousandths behind the edge and man oh man it should be a great slicer. You got a, still have a decently robust tip there. Hopefully y'all can see that. So if you need to do a little boring into some wood or something like that. Uh, he's got a, a beautifully done sharpening toil. So you should have a lot of sharpening life before it starts to widen up in the back. And being it's a fixed blade, it'd be easy to fix that later down the road. Now I did sharpen this knife because I was using it before I started the testing and I wanted to give it a fair shake. Uh, it, it sharpened up so nicely. If you've ever sharpened something with a custom heat treat, you know what I mean? Um, it deburred very easily and it took a very, very sticky edge. All right, let's get some quick specs out of the way. You have a total length of 7.5 inches. You have a cutting edge of 3.4 inches. You have a grip area of 3.7 inches. You have a handle scale thickness of 0.68, which is excellent for a fixed blade. It really fills out the hand nicely. And you have a stock thickness of 0.158 or 530 seconds. And the behind the edge thickness on this particular knife ranges from around 18 to 20 thousandths behind the edge. Uh, so we're going to put this one through its paces and see how well it performs and see how it feels in the hand. And y'all let me know what y'all think about me, you know, doing these outdoors when I can. So y'all check this out. I ended up putting my own edge on this just because I happened to use it before the testing and I wanted to make sure it was getting a fair shake. And man, oh man, did this knife get wicked sharp. It's an M4 steel at 63 HRC, and it sharpened so nicely and took a very, very sticky edge. And this is making sharp work of this cardboard, of course. Um, so far, so f everything's comfortable and just an excellent blade shape. It's going to be good. It should be good for just about everything we cut today. Um, and we'll check the edge after I get done with everything and see where it's at. But if I had to take a guess with the uh, PRC treat on it, it should uh, still be pretty darn good at the end of this. Now we're going to test the air goes and see how well that edge uh, wants to bite into the wood. And I'm just getting a feel for the handle. Make sure there's no hot spots to speak of. Um, and man, oh man. This thing, it made it very, very easy. And there's a pretty big bow in this piece of birch that I'm using. So uh, I had to follow the curve of it and I'm not the best at doing that. So uh, very, very comfortable, perfect amount of handle. And it fit my, my medium sized hand perfectly. Uh, I don't know how it fit a large hand or not, but 
definitely, definitely was easy to do this and I could have definitely done it for a lot longer. Now we're gonna do some light batoning and sorry about the camera angle. It'll get better in just a second. This is a, a little birch log, piece of birch log. And uh, it's got some pretty bad knots in it. This is a smaller blade, three and a half inches. So I'm just basically using it for say kindling. You wouldn't wanna go much bigger than say a two and a half inch uh, log, uh, piece of wood or something like that. Did fine and I'm also just checking the edge. Look at that, look at that curve in that uh, piece of wood. Also just checking out the edge stability at 17 degrees per side. Um, and so far so good. It's making sharp work of this and be perfect, you know, to get a fire going. Definitely had fun with it. And uh, we're also gonna test out that, that 90 degree spine. The knife definitely has a nice and sharp 90 degree spine to it and it was throwing sparks like crazy. Um, now I'm no bushcrafter. I've definitely lit in fires like this in the past, but I usually just use a lighter if I got one, but it's nice knowing if I don't, I could always get it started like this. Uh, it takes me a few tries cause I'm not the best and I didn't have the thinnest curls that I put in the little pile, but nice. So now we're going to get over to the sisal rope and <laughs> this is where I was just like, wow, 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 wow. This thing was just making this like butter watch how fast i'm going through this rope it just felt like i was using no pressure um it was melting through this and i definitely had a good grip on it in that pinch grip that blade shape's perfect for this type of stuff and i uh, definitely felt like i could have done it way longer than i did i ended up making 61 cuts with with no problems whatsoever but I knew I was going to be testing the rest of the materials after this, so I stopped it there. But like I said, definitely, definitely could have did more. It's got a lot, a lot of bites of that edge. That's what you get with that nice uh, quality heat treat there. That drop point is going to be great for doing these drag cuts. You can use the tip if you like, but I'm using, you know, right right there by that belly. It's just a smooth pull. And, uh, yeah, that edge didn't, it feels like it hasn't even cut anything yet. Um, all the materials were like a cakewalk for it. And uh, I, I did not feel like I tested a knife, if that makes any sense, because... Usually my hands are worn out, my wrist is worn out, I got blisters. And this one I'm using such minimal pressure to get through all this stuff that I could have went on for probably an hour <laughs> before I would have got tired. Um, that's what a good comfortable knife is like and one that has a good edge to it. And just watch, through the denim, still has tons of aggression to that edge. I cannot wait to test it after the end of this and see how good that edge is, but it feels outstanding. So just imagine if you were cutting up wood and doing camp chores, just imagine how long this edge would last you. I mean, this stuff, a lot of this stuff's abrasive on an edge and it did not phase this knife one bit. Now let's check out that edge after all that testing. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, can I still make? <laughs> Very good, and I guarantee you if I strop this up, it would be just like it was after I sharpened it. Yeah, that's great. Now that we're down to the tabletop, let's take a close look at this knife. Beautiful blade, nice. There's a satin finish on it, and it looks like he throws it in the tumbler to um, knock off some of the harsher edges, give you a light stone wash underneath that satin. Very, very nice. Uh, you kind of see where I scraped the fire steel with it up here, that 90 degree, almost like burr up there. Very nice. The jimping, outstanding. Look at that fine cut jimping. Perfectly done. It's got terra knives on the top. USA down here. Very, very cool. I think it would also have been nice to have maybe the blade steel put right here because he does uh, different batches. He does M4 steel. Now he's doing Magna Cut and 4V. So three 
outstanding, outstanding uh, steel, especially for fixed blades. I'd love to see him do a batch of 3V as well. Be a nice, tough, tough fixed blade, especially for his bigger model. Um, he currently has six different models. First up, we have the Bushcrafter. And I think that one would be good for 3V steel or 4V. Both of them excellent choices. Next up, we have the Ranger. And what the Ranger is, basically the Bushcrafter with a different grip to it. And you'll see that he does two different uh, style grips. And uh, the next one we have is the Hunter. And I think that's the perfect name for it because that's a great hunting size blade for doing skinning game and stuff like that. And for me, I think that's a great EDC size. Uh, then you have the Hiker. That's just the, the same as the Hunter except with a different profile to that handle. Another excellent EDC blade. Then lastly, we have the Trekker, which you see here. And it looks like he does two different blade shapes. You have this like drop point right here. And then that spearish uh, point blade. And uh, this one is more of a three finger grip for me. And uh, I love the thickness to the handle on this one. This one's in Magna Cut. You definitely want to check out this review. I just started doing the testing to it. And man, I'm liking this little guy. So let's take a look at this handle. You have a nice contoured handle that has this beautiful rock textured pattern on it. Very, very cool looking. This particular one is in green G10. He does also use Terra Tough. You got nice bolt-on construction. So if you want, if you, you know, get it wet or something and you want to take the scales off and clean it so you don't get any rust underneath there, you can do it. Everything is perfectly mated. Look down there. You can tell he does a lot of hand finishing work after the fact. There's no high spots. Everything lines up perfectly. Nice lanyard hole, which is something I do like on my fixed blades because uh, they're good to have. So you don't it don't doesn't come out of the hand. Uh, I have a perfect amount of handle with some to spare with my medium sized hands, so it should fit your large hands. Uh, nicely you could probably fit an extra large hand on there as well uh, very comfortable in hand no hot spots at all during the testing the weight on it is good let's see the balance point is right where it needs to be sorry the texture kind of had it flipping around let's check it out on the scale first off in grams without the sheath and 141 grams and 4.97 ounces without the sheath and with the sheath with the tech lock type system you're looking at 7.29 ounces, so not bad. And I think that's why I would classify this one for me as a belt knife, not so much an EDC fixed blade because of the extra weight and size. I, I like to keep it at seven and under for my EDC fixed blades. And I like them a little bit lighter than this one, but this is a perfect, perfect belt knife. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Kaiser Baby and the Bradford Guardian 3.5. Uh, the Guardian is just a touch longer, uh, but you have more cutting edge here, and the Baby is pretty darn similar in overall length at least, uh, but this one feels a little better in the hand because you have extra thickness. Kind of similar to that 3.5 uh, Bradford Guardian because it has that good thick handle to it. Next up, we have the Work Tough Gear Nomad EDC and the White River uh, Firecraft 3.5 excellent size references here last up we have the line steel m4 and the ontario rat model 3 uh very similar in overall length to the rat 3 except you have more handle on this one or more it's a more much more comfortable handle should i say because of that deep choil right there and then the m4 is a little bit longer overall but you have pretty much the same uh cutting edge the m4 has a little bit more I'll give you a look at that sharpening choil because it's a little hard to see outside. Um, excellent job. Love the way he did that there. You got a lot of sharpening light before it's going to widen up at all. You have a nice tip like I tried to show. Very nicely done. And now for my nitpicks and complaints. I really only have one thing and it, that thing he's trying to address currently. And all, all, all I can say is that you know, he after he's done grinding the bevels, he puts the initial edge on with the belt like, you know, most of them do. 
and the edge bevel was pretty obtuse. I think this one was 31 degrees per side. Uh, now it was very even. He did a great job with that, but um, I reprofiled it to 17 degrees and you still have a pretty small size bevel. So, you know, and it's still nice and thin. He is currently working on trying to get a fixed angled system to put the final edge on it and uh, that's awesome. And it looks like he strives to improve with every single batch and he does a great job of it. So do I recommend the knife? Highly, highly recommend it. Absolutely loved it. Comfortable in hand. I cannot wait to uh, start testing this little guy. Just so well done. All the sheaths are nice, nice positive click, gives you a nice ramp on each sheath, nice kydex. I did remember one other thing that, um, a nitpick that I would, I would have liked to see on this. Perfect sheath, love it, nice ramp, but I would like a drainage hole. Like, uh, I mean, I can do it myself, just drill a little hole right here. And the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, M4 is not a stainless and here in the south, it gets sweaty, and to say the blade gets sweaty, and you put the knife in there, it's not going to have any means to dry out in there, which could cause some rust. So it would have been nice to have either a drainage hole put right here, but that's it's a good bit of work when he could just drill a little hole right there. Um, not the end of the world. Like I said, something that I could easily do. You have nice uh, lashing points on the knife, taco-style sheath. Nice uh, nice thickness on the kydex. It doesn't feel slim, but limsy. No rattle in the sheath whatsoever. Very nice. Uh, like I said, tech lock style system. I don't know. I don't think it's a actually branded tech lock, but um, I mean, it's, it's nice. Fit my belt nicely. Um, I think if your belt is maybe over two inches, it, it might not be a fit unless you pull this out. Um, I, don't, I don't use the tech locks that much. I usually... Uh, I have a, I usually use soft loops, so still a nice way to carry them. There's a knife on the sheath. Uh, I like carrying it like this. I'm on a side by side right now, so when I'm sitting down, it's nice. I either carry it here, appendix carry, or in scout carry in the back. That's just the way I like to carry it. Excellent sheath right here. Good retention. Um, nice positive click, and there's no there's no rattle to it at all once it's in the sheath. Got a nice little push off point right here. Makes it easy to draw the knife, use it, and push it back. And to think that this this uh, kid has only been making knives for a few years now, I don't know exactly, he's, I know he, he hasn't been making it for long, is unbelievable. Cannot wait to see where he goes from here. And I can't wait to test the Trekker. I'd uh, love to hear y'all thoughts on it. Currently, Everything's sold out, but he is his next drop is going to be around April. He usually does a drop of 12 knives, um, which means he, he usually has like four uh, different models in there. And then uh, he does two drops a month. <clears throat> and of course, you know, uh, the more he can streamline things, that might get better. But he likes to pay attention to the quality instead of trying to pump out, you know, a bunch of knives that are subpar. So I respect that. And the prices, I can promise you, will have to eventually go up. So if you want one of his knives, follow him on Instagram. He talks about when the drops are there. And he has a newsletter that he's been trying to uh, put the drop dates on there as well. So if I know about it, uh, I will do my best to inform y'all. And let me know what y'all thought about the video, trying to little something different and uh, trying to keep it fun. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.